When you're picking up for your pickup sticks, this will be no different than any traditional pickup stick pattern. You only ever want to pick up your slot yarns. So you're going to need to bring both heddles into that down position and that will bring your slot yarns to the surface of the weaving and it'll get those whole threads kind of out of the way. So now I'm going to grab my pickup stick, A, and I'm going to do one down, one up, all the way across. I'm using the nice beveled edge of the pickup stick to my advantage while I pick up the warp yarns. Once pickup stick A is inserted, you can just push it to the rear of your loom and let it hang out. Pickup stick B is going to be one up and one down. So you can see it's just gonna be the opposite of what I just did. This pickup stick is just gonna act as a placeholder until we get the string heddles and heddle rod attached. The reason that we're not gonna leave pickup stick B inserted is because once you start weaving, you're gonna need access to pick up stick A and B, sometimes you'll need it simultaneously, sometimes you'll need A and not B, and if you try to advance A with B in front of it, you can't. You can't escape that B, so we're going to get this out of here so that you can have freedom to manipulate pick up stick A and the warp threads that are housed on pick up stick B as you need to. I'm gonna bring my heddles back into the neutral positions. So now to create string heddles, I have some already made on this heddle here. The reason I like to use this heddle is it's gonna ensure that your string heddles are the proper length when you set up your loom. So I'm gonna shift the ones I've made aside for a moment and I'm gonna bring in my cone of 5-2 cotton that I've been using to create the string heddles. I love using the 5-2 cotton because it's quite strong, but it's not so bulky that it's getting in the way while I'm weaving. You never wanna use anything stretchy, something nice and stable. So I'm gonna use this heddle as a reference for how long I need to cut my thread from the cone in order to tie off the string heddles. I like to make them a bit longer than what I'll ultimately need just for the ease of being able to tie knots. So that will be for one and I'll use that length as a guide. If I hadn't made any of my string heddles yet. I would use that first thread just as a guide to cut 20 pieces of this 5-2 cotton. With your string heddles, you can use them again and again for different projects. After a while, they will start, you know, start to fray a little bit or maybe the knot will come out, but they'll last for quite some time. Now that I have these sections cut off, I'm gonna bring one at a time to the heddle. I'm gonna wrap around the heddle and tie with a double knot. If you don't have an extra heddle outside of the two that you've already threaded on your loom, be sure to do this step before you set up your loom. So I'm gonna just tie off these remaining two strands, again using a nice firm double knot. Leaving the tails with some extra length is great so you're not fumbling around with little tiny ends trying to make that knot. And from here, then I like to trim off this excess yarn. You'll notice though 
that I have not trimmed those tails all the way down to the knot. I've left a solid inch of fiber. If you trim right next to the knot, the second you start using these string heddles, they're just going to start popping apart. So do be sure to leave a bit of tail after the knot. I like leaving my string heddles on the heddle while I'm making all of them. It just keeps them nice and organized. At this point, I'm going to shift all of these warp threads on pickup stick B onto a string heddle and then onto my heddle rod. It's much easier to see what threads you're shifting if you have that pickup stick inserted. If you're just trying to figure out where it is from the whole bundle of warp threads in the back, it's kind of a nightmare. So always insert that pickup stick B and then transition onto your heddle rod. So I'm gonna start taking my string heddles off and laying them out, kind of just prepping them so that they're easy to pick up while I'm shifting those warp threads from pickup stick B onto the rod. So I'm gonna lay out as many as I can fit just on the base of my weaving. You can always put them on a little table beside you as well and work from there. And now I'm gonna bring the first string heddle to the back of the loom. So this knot, you can keep it to the right or to the left, but avoid letting it be on the bottom or the top. And I'll show you why. I'm gonna bring the string heddle underneath the first warp end and then I'm going to fold that string heddle in half. And you can see how now it's controlling the first warp thread that was on pickup stick B. And that makes it so that knot lands cleanly at the top and not kind of in some funny position along the string heddle. I like keeping the extra thread on top so it doesn't start tangling with my other warp yarns. I like to put on a few string heddles before I put it onto the heddle rod and I just use my finger as a placeholder. So again I'm bringing that string heddle under the warp thread and then folding it in half. My finger is currently a stand-in for that heddle rod. And when I kind of get to a point where it's getting awkward to keep holding these threads on my finger, or if I feel like one's about to fall off, oh, one did fall off, I'm gonna get it again. If you notice one falling, make sure you grab it at that moment. Otherwise, you'll have to back off all of the heddles beside it in order to pick it back up. So now since that happened, I know it's a good moment to insert my heddle rod. So I've got my heddle rod now through and I'm going to pull up on it just to make sure that all of these warp threads are securely attached to those string heddles. And then I'm going to just let that heddle rod rest on the back side and I'm going to continue picking up my next batch and you'll need to do this all the way across so this time I have my knots on the right hand side before I had them on the left you can see that either direction is totally fine because both of them come to that end result where you have those knots on the top so now I'm going to transition these ends onto my heddle rod. Again, I'm just going to check everything. It's looking good. Make sure that you have enough of your heddle rod clearing past your string heddles so that it doesn't fall out the side and then all the string heddles will pop off and you'll have to start all over again. 
I'm going to remo remove the remainder of my string heddles off of that heddle and get them laid out. Now you'll continue bringing your string heddles to the threads on pickup stick B, attaching them and getting them connected to your apron rod. Once you have all of your string heddles attached to the heddle rod, just do one final check. I'm pulling up and I see every thread that was on pickup stick B is pulling up where I want it to be. So that's great. And I'm also making sure that the rod itself is centered and that I don't have something kind of wonky and uneven like this. So just make sure the center of the heddle rod is hitting roughly at the center of your loom. From here, you can see that these string heddles, they want to shift and wiggle. So I'm going to get a piece of tape. You can use painter's tape or masking tape. And I'm going to attach them to the top of the heddle rod. So I'm just going to rip off a piece that will cover all of the string heddles. You don't have to go edge to edge on the rod. Just enough length to make sure you've got all of the string heddles included. I like putting one edge of tape onto the front of the loom so that the tape doesn't start curling up on me as I transition to that heddle rod. So now I'm gonna pull up on the rod, bring the tape over the top, and fasten everything down so that they can't fall off and everything is just in a good location. Now that that's done, I can remove pickup stick B 